Hey guys, this is Katie here with Life the Mundane and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I would love to have you guys stick around and have you click the little subscription button down below and the little bell notification to be notified when new videos come out. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six kiddos and I'm married to a second generation homeschooler as well. We both come from large families and we have been around the block when it comes to homeschooling for sure. So today I wanna to share with you guys five things that you really don't need to homeschool. And some of them may shock you, but I hope that it can help you release some of the stress, release some of the guilt that you have over certain things and move on to better plans for the next year. So let's get started. This is a fun collaboration put on by Workbooks and Tots. Amelia over there had this great idea for talking about the five things that you don't really need to homeschool. Now, some of them are gonna be sharing things about five specific things that you don't need for this specific year that they bought and found out they really didn't need. And today I'm gonna to be talking more generally about five things that you really don't have to have in order to homeschool. You guys should be sure to check out the playlist below so you can see her video and others that join in and be sure that you guys can know that you don't have to have it all to do it. The first thing you really don't have to have to homeschool is any kind of college education or special training in being a teacher. Yes, can it be helpful? Absolutely. I'm not saying you shouldn't have that, but I think that it's something that is highly overrated. We as parents can learn right alongside our kids. We have teacher's books that tell us what to say and that give us the answers and we have the ways to find the information. Also, when it comes to information that our kids need to learn that maybe we really are truly weekend and we either can't learn us alongside them or we just don't want to learn alongside them. There are opportunities to have your kids go to co-ops where they attend classes with another teacher. There are opportunities for taking classes when they're in high school and a lot of local colleges that they'll let them dual enroll. Um, there are so many resources out there. Don't let your education or lack of education stop you from homeschooling. I'm not saying it's not gonna take work. It is going to take some work, um, a decent amount of work actually, but I want you to be assured that you have the ability to do it because you love your kid more than anybody else. And if you are invested in them the way that I think most of you guys are, then you're going to be willing to do whatever it takes to get them the best education. So understand that, that, you know, this is, this is really about how far you're willing to go for your kids. All right, the second thing that you really don't need when you're going to homeschool is a desk or a classroom. Again, nothing wrong with having it. I've had desks in the past. I've had homeschool rooms in the past, but it's absolutely not necessary um, to start out with. Actually, we've been homeschooling for years and we totally do not have a homeschool room or desk. We do our homeschooling at the kitchen counter and at the table and on the couch and outside and on the floor and wherever, right? We move around all day long and we like it that way. It helps my kids to focus more and um, it's, it's really kind of helpful. Now, if you guys want to know what that looks like, I have made a video um, that you guys can check out above in the um, up in the i cards or down in the description that shows you guys what how our homeschooling stuff looks because it's kind of stashed all throughout the house and we wanted to do that without making it look super schoolroomish. So if you guys want to check that out, that might be helpful to you. But please know you don't have to have it look like school because you're not schooling at home. You're homeschooling. The third thing that you don't really need is every single educational game and manipulative out there. Okay, this is hard for me. This is super hard for me. I still have boxes and piles of fun schooly type things that, um, fun school activities that I've never used. And it is hard to say, but um, it's just not something that's absolutely needed. And especially if you're just starting out, I recommend getting your feet wet, you know, getting your routine in, and then you can add those things in later. Now that's not to say that you should have zero manipulatives or zero teaching tools or, or fun educational games at all. Not what I'm saying, please don't hear that. What I am saying is start out small with a small collection, simple things. When it comes to counting um, stuff, a lot of times they recommend counting bears, which are really, really fun, but you can also count pencils or popsicle sticks or rocks in your yard. You don't have to have all of the fancy gadgets and, and educational bright colored items in order to make it 
usable. Even for your toddlers, they say, well, counting bears are great because they can sort by color, by size. Again, popsicle sticks, rocks, paint them, <laughs> like, or put a sticker, put a garage sale sticker on them and let them sort them out. So there are a lot of ways to make it fun. I have counting bears. I have some of those fun educational things. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't overwhelm yourself or your budget by starting out really big on all of that and then not actually getting around to using it. I also will say, as you build your collection, because you will, it's so tempting and it's so much fun. Um, but as you build your collection, try to come up with ways on how to actually get around to using those things. Um, so for us, we have set aside Fridays as our fun Friday. We school book work four days out of the week. And the fifth day is for um, our spelling test usually. And then outside of that, it is just fun school. So we do play those educational games. We do play with some of those manipulatives. Um, we do things like that. And so we have a set aside time where we're using those things. If you don't set aside a time for it, they'll most likely never get used. So just keep that in mind. Number four of things you don't need to homeschool is you don't need to do every single curriculum every single day or every single month or every single year or every single semester, okay? You need to establish your core things. You're probably gonna need to do reading, math, um, and for us, Bible every day, but your um, extras, your history, your science, your social studies, your geography, um, those kinds of things can be divided up. There can be years where you don't work on those and other years where you're a lot heavier on them. For us, uh, we've done a year before where we did history for the fall semester and we did science for the spring semester. We have we now alternate it where we do history and science every other day um, because we've fallen more into our routine. But I wanna encourage you that there are a lot of curriculums out there for some fantastic subjects. Mainers curriculums and foreign language curriculums and curriculums for coding and typing and all of these things. You don't have to have all of that to start homeschooling. And I actually would recommend not starting with all of that. Pick one or two fun things. You don't wanna just have core subjects because especially if those are challenging for your kids, it's gonna make school kind of miserable if that's all you've got. So have something fun, but don't overwhelm yourself by trying to do it all at once and understand it's okay if it's a while before you get to it. It'll all get filled in eventually, okay? So the fifth thing may shock you guys. I know, hold on to your seats for this because I know this will shock you because I hear constantly when someone finds out I homeschool, especially that I homeschool six kids, they go, I could never, I don't have enough patience. I'm here to tell you guys the number five of things that you don't have to have to homeschool is patience. I, I don't know many uber patient homeschool moms. I mean, they're patient the same way any of us are patient and they're impatient the same way any of us are impatient. <laughs> we get frustrated with our kids. We, we need breaks. We, yeah, it's just not a thing that you have to have. It's something that gets developed and you grow in that. I'm definitely more patient now than I was when I started, but I am nowhere close to this perfect picture of patience and perfection that I think a lot of people, um, you know, really put on homeschoolers. That is just not a thing, all right? So I want you to know that you can do it. Again, like I said earlier, if you love your kids and you're willing to pursue anything that they need to help them succeed, you guys are gonna be able to do it, even if there's headbutting. I've talked about this before in my video with dealing with sibling conflict. Conflict is a part of life, all right? And with much conflict comes much opportunity for conflict resolution. It's gonna happen, there's gonna be conflict in your home and you're not always gonna keep your cool about it. And that's okay because it gives you more times to come to your children and apologize and say you're sorry or vice versa. And bonds are, are forged when that happens and you become stronger as a family. So I just wanna encourage you guys that those are five things that I think a lot of people think you have to have to homeschool or that you have to do to homeschool. And I'm just here to tell you, you don't have to. Having them can be fantastic and great but know that it's not a reason to not homeschool in this situation. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys like this video, please stick around. I would love for you guys to check out the other videos we have on our channel and be sure to go check out my new website, um, lifethemundane.com. You guys can see a little bit more about us and our family. And also there's some great resources on there that I would love for you guys to be able to access. Um, we will be posting again. I post every Wednesday and Saturday and I have some super fun collaborations coming up soon, all about some of our favorite read alouds for um, for our kids and some of my least favorite read alouds. And I'm excited to share all of that with you guys. So be sure to stick around and we'll talk to you later. Bye.